Okay. So we're back, folks. This is, we just were over there. So this machine op one them, or sort of op zero them. Yeah. But now it's quickly set. And this is funny because this is what I'm thinking about doing, which looks crazy, but pallet system with a pallet and then a vise on top. I'm even thinking, is there a way? It probably doesn't make sense for now, but you could actually have a, a potentially a screwless vise that's machined to fit directly onto the base of it. You save yourself the money and Z of this. But regardless, this is now ready to go with a simple stop. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's do it. That cut it's taken right now is the first time we ran them. It was a lot more material, mm -hmm. and we just wanted to clear it out. So when the face mill cuts it, we're not grabbing the last piece and oh, flinging it across. I'm it's a safety issue. Very so. familiar with that. Yeah. Yep. So that's the same kind of metal octagonal insert, huh? Correct. Uh -huh. yeah, the thing is, it's good. Six thousand RPMs, two hundred fifty inches a minute. Yeah. Looks like it's a six or eight insert. It's a six. Uh huh. Twenty pound chip load per tooth. That's right. That sounds about right. Uh, uh no, I don't think so. I'll, I'll go do the math and yeah. we'll put it up here on the video. Do you know what the width the width the cut is? Step over. Uh, I want to say it's three inch. It's under three inch, two, two eight something. What's two the face? Is the diameter of the tool? It's considered a three inch. Okay. But you're doing 80, 90 percent step over. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So again, a finishing pass. Just get that nice surface finish. 100 inches a minute at this point. Interesting. You do do a little Lincoln move transition at a higher feed rate. Correct, yeah. Change a split second. Uh huh. So from the first operation, we've drilled the majority of the way through these. This mm -hmm. is just connecting the two holes. Why don't you go through in the first? Um, we don't spot drill any of them, so we want to use a stub length okay. cobalt. Ooh. So a shear hog. Yeah. So all the shear hog is doing is relieving the area. You don't want full contact on the table. You want designated perimeter yeah. things. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we're looking at is obviously the upside down. The, the, what we're looking at is the surface that goes on the machine. Or on your top of your Saunders machine works fixture plate. There you go. throw that out there. There you go. I like that. No, but that is your idea is, is a Tormach machine or a smaller machine here. Correct. The downside between this and the larger system, you don't have the seal around it. Correct. Uh -huh. And you only have, you have less, a little bit less clamping pressure. Uh, yeah, because there's only one locking element, not yeah. two. Okay. So it's half. But uh, I designed it so that um, you don't need, like the average Tormach user is not machined as aggressively as a Haas user. Yeah. Um, and so still, if we were to clamp one down, it's rock solid. Okay, to totally agree. It. I can't yeah. have cotton fat and it yeah. wouldn't be funny good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jay uh, brought a speed change power system out to the open house and I still got it at our shop and we have been playing around with it, testing the repeatability and how it functions and how it lifts off. And uh, Jay, I gotta say, I'm really impressed. Going good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I found that out just now. Yeah. We didn't talk about it. That's great. Yeah. What kind of uh, preventative maintenance do you do on your machines in the shop? Yeah, so we keep everything clean. That's yep. one thing that reveals any type of defects. If you're cleaning, you see something. Um, we regularly, what, what's most important is we calibrate these. Um, what do you mean? You yeah. send them out? Yeah, uh, no, we'll, we'll do them, indicate them. You yep. know, if you've ever adjusted one yep. of these timers, have, yep. that's key. Um, as far as preventative maintenance, the, the machine is pretty good at having 
preset things of like timing where, okay, now we do need to go through and check seals. Well, it'll pop up and tell you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't got that yet. Yeah. So that kind of gives us reminders. Uh, two machines, we're probably going to have the, our local HFO come out and do an overall thing where they take off the way covers. Yep. They service that, take off the head covers, so yep. do all that. There's just certain things we don't know. Yeah. So, uh, that's a total example of where I think I'm past it as a bootstrap entrepreneur, but like, yeah, that's going to cost money, and it's absolutely worth it. These are machines that cost a lot of money that can make you a lot of money every day. Yeah. And, you know, I got burned last week because we uh, ruined a, on a, on a fixture, we ruined a thread, which was going to happen. I should have known that, and I didn't have the right size helicoils in stock, and that cost me, that cost me $1,000 in downtime yeah. for a $50 part. Exactly, yeah. So this tool here. Ooh, look at that guy. Yeah. So this is an AB Tools custom uh, slotting end mill. AB Tools? AB Tools, yeah. Awesome. Shearhogs brother. Their name brother. came up this morning too. That's yeah. too funny. Yeah, so they do great. They're in California. It's really quick lead time. So this is a standard, I guess it's a high speed shank. And then they braze on yeah. the carbide inserts. Yeah, we did a factory tour there. We actually were seeing where they braze on those. Yeah. You, can have it, you can send that tool in and they'll yep. re yeah. insert it for you. This tool has cut every slot on all of our systems, vacuum, pallet, and now MPS for the past, I want to say, six years. And the same tool? Yeah, same tool. Serious? Yeah. Oh my so, God. <laughs> AB needs to make them less good. I know. So, so you send them back more. That's hilarious. Yeah. So we're going to go in and it's going to just cut around the uh, yeah. perimeter. Yeah. I got to give Jay a big shout out and a big thank you. First of all, for the tour, letting us film, you know, sharing the story, the entrepreneurship. But he's running apart for the it's first time. And that's not something that anybody likes to do on film. Um, he was totally okay with it, but Load trying 65. to give him uh, the space he needs because it's just a different mind, fr mind frame when you're setting up a job. Here's one thing that I maybe want to show. On the ATM uh, tool management, uh -huh. what we do, and, and not many people do this, is there's a load and a limit for each tool. Okay. So when we know that a tool is cutting correctly, now we don't have probes, so we're not checking for tool breakage detection. Sure. Yeah. But if we see like one is like, maybe a tool's broken, you might see the load go up on the following tool. It's a little risky. Yeah. But so this one, I just wanted to check that the limit is not really low, like 30. We bump it up to 65. We know from experience that it should cut below 65%. So, so, so it, for instance, let's say one of those braised inserts somehow broke off. Exactly. Ain't gonna happen, but if it did, then it would probably alarm out Correct. because that. Correct, yeah. yeah, you would see that load go up and cool. it would sound differently. So. That's great, I didn't know about uh, how easy that was to uh -huh. do. Yeah, okay. in current commands, you have these tabs up here, uh, ATM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, cool. okay, so let's run this. Only a 20, 25% spindle load. Mm -hmm. That's really cutting though, holy cow. Yeah. 7,000 and... It's uh, 7,000 and six, um, 60 inches a minute. Wow. You can see the chips coming off on the back wall. That's impressive. There it? it is, yeah. That is awesome. That's it, there's off too. Cool. So the workflow from this point, um, so material came in a couple days ago, we sawed rotary, uh, op zero, op one and yep. two, this yep. is technically op three. Yep. Then we would inspect them straight to anodize where they get part anodized. We've got okay. one left over from our previous run that we could um, assemble right now if you're interested. Absolutely, and that's okay. what caught my eye. You know, and again, I gotta give it a shout out. Jay doesn't have a huge shop and he tries to keep it lean, gets material the next day mm -hmm. and, and doesn't keep a lot of inventory in hand. It's still a little bit weird to me, but uh, he's got something going on here. So that's what caught my eye was that, I, I hope that's where we're going. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Check this out, folks. Yeah. This is awesome. So uh, HDPE? Yeah, uh huh. Yep. HDPE. We've machined it uh, 12 by 24, inch and a half. So we've machined it with um, all the components that need to go in. So we set up this board first, yep. and everything you see here needs to go in. So you just go through and you just populate. Like we've got all the socket cap yep. screws that go in. Um, John Grimsville, are you watching this? <laughs> Yes. So we would take the rails, they have their place. Um, you can kind of see there's some yeah. like dots there. Sorry folks, this is probably gonna come out terribly on video. That's the downside of this material, but. Yeah. Here. So that tells us to orient these 
this hole, which is ah, off center. So, interesting. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. So these are surface hardened in ground? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. They're hardened to just under 50 Rockwell C. Okay. And then we grind them to thickness. Yep. And then you'll just literally just go through op one. It's kind of like operations. Yep. Oh, that's interesting. When I first saw this, I thought that was more of a parts caddy, but this actually helps facilitate. Look right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can do this a few ways. I'm just rushing through. We would Loctite it usually. We have a gun that we do this with. Uh, we have torque specs. Mm -hmm. Where did you say you got the Kaizen ends? From Fast Cap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Easy yeah. enough. Yep. Can't, can't, can't beat that. And then from there, we would go to Op 2, where we place in. <laughs> yeah. So that's Amazing. done. And then we that little uh, shape, that's so that we can't put the wrong one in, yep. in the wrong place. Yep. Okay, we'll pop those in. These are, if you don't want me asking, these are purchased? No, we make those. Really? So we rough turn them, um, we machine them. Uh, now this is all on our live tool lathe. Yep. yep. Send them out to heat treat, come back, we blast them so it takes off the heat scale. Yep. Looks nice. And then we hard turn them in our wow. other lathe. Folks, if you are just watching this, take a look at our first uh, video we did with Jay a few months back, and we've got some parts on his Doosan 220 LS. LSYC. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. Awesome. So we would pop these in. That's a spring? Yeah. Actually, okay. this needs to be lubed or else it won't go in. Just a little bit. It's a very interesting spring design. Mm -hmm. Those are called crest to crest wave springs. Interesting. That's what's cool. That's what gives this the, you know, unlike the vacuum systems where you do need to maintain air pressure for them to work, this mm -hmm. has got a, the word I think of a dead man switch, but basically even if you lose air pressure or intentionally disconnect it, mm -hmm. there, the air pressure disconnects it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It unlocks it. Unlocks it. it. Thank yeah. You. Much better word. So from here we have our brake cover. Um, we made this little 3D printed tool, um, which helps greatly because we're going to put these ball bearings in from the inside. Mm -hmm. So we're going to line at least one. It's a beautiful part. Thank you. Yep. And so let's see. There it is. So if you can see, what we've done is we just put one in, yeah, magnet. and that magnet holds it in mm -hmm. place because it's nearly impossible. It's really annoying to install without it. So yeah. we're just going to go through and start doing these guys. The magnets are pulling them outward. Okay. We also have an O-ring seal that had its place that yep. goes around here. And do you need to do maintenance on these as an owner? No, we have some that are literally like um, our original pallet system in 2005. I just talked to the company, first customer ever in New York. Yeah. They said they're running them daily. So no kidding. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, you could do some preventive maintenance if you wanted to grease the inside, but it's really not necessary. So, and then we would just go in like this. Yep. With these guys. Yep. Go in and That's once again okay. bolt it down. Wow. So I'm going to skip that. Yep. And, and these hold down the two diamonds? Correct. Yep. So the third op, you see how we have these cutouts here. This just goes in on the side. And then these just go in here. Yep. And we can spin these into place. And of course, we have our tools in front of us. Yeah, folks, this is what I love. I mean, there is no particular tool here that's expensive. Mm -hmm. Sure, you may buy high-end good wrenches, but a, a good version of this, max 20 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the really high end. Yeah. And, and you got dedicated tools. You do the color coding for your products, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. So the, the white is, um, grab the white ones when we're doing our uh, SmartVac 2 vacuum line. Mm -hmm. The red ones indicate it's a pallet system. So we just do that. And then if they're missing and they're laying around, we go, oh, we know exactly where this where goes. goes. So yep. from here, I'm going to grab this. <laughs> you watch keep the, the socket on. The video we did with Jay on going through the quality control sheets, this was in the background. And God bless, I, I asked him today, I was like, did you intentionally remove the scissors just to antagonize just to us? Just bother people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I trust you. I did not. It was off camera. So Yeah. So we got that snug down. But even our shop, my guys like it now. I don't, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know that they doubted it, but I don't know that they got it at first with our tool carts. And now I, I know our guys like it. They know the tools are where they are. They yeah. can get them. It makes you, makes you use the right tool because you know where it is. Correct. And you don't have that risk of floundering while you look yeah at it. the worst thing to do is is look around for a tool that's just dumb time that's just time spent doing something you really shouldn't be doing so as long as we can have these and have these in multiple places yeah, the angle too i like that how yeah it's that's presented. nice so um so fast cap sells these to put on the wall but yeah. then they also promote being mobile and that's not yeah. mobile if it's on the wall so right. we have these custom fabricated and then the last step would be of course to put a sticker on here's oh, cool mm -hmm. yeah these are like dome tag labels they go in right there in our pocket so that centers it. 
They look great. Done, and then we would have a finished product, of course, with the breaker and, and you know what I like about that is that this looks like such a fully baked product. Mm -hmm. the, the, the assembly, the stickers, the quality, the packaging, it doesn't look like something that comes out of a small shop with, with three, four, or five guys. Yeah, yeah, it's not. That's um, what, what matters most is when our customers open the package and then when they start using it, those are the two things, that wow moment and yep. then that continual ongoing yep. wow. You and know, that's just, what we want to shoot just for. Works. So, yeah, so this would, uh, we have torque specs that so we would do this. Of course, yep. two. And there you go, that's pretty close to the finished product. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Now, there's pallets that go on these. Okay. What we have is in this design, this is slightly off center because one of the complaints over the years is like my operator loaded the pallet backwards. Backward, right. So I've designed this off center so you can only put a pallet on one way. So um, let's assemble one of the pallets. Yeah, awesome. So we changed the design to make it more user friendly um, or I guess you could say Look at this. assembly friendly. Look at this. So instead of doing drilling, which you can tell drilling is slow, counterboring mm -hmm. is slow. We just drilled. Um, to kind of like drive yeah. holes or sure. lugs. Spanner. Yeah, mm -hmm. custom spanner that we've developed. Um, it has the, the lugs and then it has small neodymium magnets yep. so that when we clip it on, this guy stays in place. Okay. Yes. Now we, we have this handle that we can easily turn it and yep. then this is, this is a one way clutch bearing yes. that we can snug it down. So, so you freewheel it, oh yeah. yes. So we'll just put it in, we can hold that. Okay, it's down. Torque it. So amazing. Done. That is that's amazing. so much faster than dealing with little six socket cap screws, you know, and the oh yeah, putting or a Loctite spanner on each where one. you can't get it started exactly. and then you're, you're having to go around. Yeah. Uh huh. So that's done. Awesome. In seconds, we've assembled what we did. So we yep. fully changed because of the MPS. I wanted to make this. The, the goal was to make this as efficiently as possible. That's really efficient. Mm -hmm. And so we've changed over, and our speed change system now has these types too. So awesome. Yeah. Bushings go in with some snap rings, and right. then that's done. Got it. Obviously, it's not <clears throat> referencing off of the aluminum, but rather an inserted hard. Correct. Yeah. yeah, and then I uh, 3D printed these kind of template things because we this sticker indicates which side uh, this pallet should face. Yep. It absolutely will not go uh, on that way. So we want to put an indicator. Pearson. Pearson. Yes. Yep. Got it. So to do that, we made a foolproof thing. So mm -hmm. this is kind of a 3D printed part. Yep. And so we'll just pop that in the hole and that gives us a reference of which yep. side. If oh, we because it's off center, it's won't. Yeah, if we wanted to do it on the other side, it wouldn't fit. It doesn't fit. Yeah, it doesn't yep. fit. And so we have one for the eight inch wide and the six inch wide. So, so simple. That's how we do it around here. Jay. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Sean.